Welcome to Bite Size Yaps, where we just yap about stupid shit. And this time we we're yapping about The Boys Season 4, Episode 7. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that intro. But yeah, we're going to be talking about Season 4, Episode 7 of The Boys, which this episode is called, titled The Insider. I never actually mentioned these titles before, but yeah. Also, spoiler alert this is a spoiler discussion, basically me yapping the entire time. And yeah, I didn't cover Episode 6. Mostly because I wasn't a big fan of it. And I honestly didn't have the energy to make a yap session for that one. It was a disgusting episode for sure, but I don't know. I don't really want to talk about that much. But this one is a great episode, I think. It's much better, much of much of an improvement for sure. And I feel like it's a very eventful episode. It really sets up for a very interesting finale. Where I really hope that finale does a lot for the future of the boys and really changes things up. Once and for all, you know, it finally changes the status quo and sees where, uh, what's it called, really sets up season five, because season five is the final season, so it really sets that up really well, which, I mean, for this episode, they really set up a lot of um, new aspects, like, spoiler alert, again, there is Starlight, but not really Starlight, you know, Starlight ain't Starlight, you know, and I feel like um, Aaron Moriarty and her Starlight character is the MVP of this episode, or one of the MVPs. Because she really um, conveys this sense of, um, there's a sense of brutality that she has, for sure, especially in this season, where she's going through a lot. So is Huey, but she, she Starlight is also going through a lot, which, for the most part, Starlight is, um, what's it called? She really got her get back on The Deep, really, and it's really fun to see that, you know? And speaking of The Deep, The Deep is um, truly pathetic. I guess you could say deep is deeply pathetic and it's very interesting to see this character's evolution for sure. Cause there aren't things that he's not changed. Like this, the guy hasn't changed too much from where he was in season one, but you can tell that the guy has become more of like a, the butt of a joke, but he's also evolved to being very sinister. Like he, the dude was always sinister, especially from the first episode of this show. But I feel like there is something more, um, the guy is very insecure to the point where he has to use his insecurities and he changes that insecurity into rage and violence. And that's the thing that he uses to make himself feel better. It's violence, which is such an interesting way to play this character. And honestly, it makes things a lot more interesting in this vast amount of interesting characters, which seriously, shout out to Chance Crawford. He, they do got some range for sure. I feel like he was played played off more as the butt of a joke for season two and three, but now in season four, he is a lot more... He's still very pathetic, but he's also sinister in a way that kind of gives you that icky feeling, you know? It is so fun, though. He's so fun to watch, and he is so funny. So that's why I'm like, you know, The Deep is one of the episode's MVPs, and he's... Honestly, one of the season's MVPs, he doesn't get that many um, moments, but the moments he gets are really entertaining. Like, he he doesn't have a dull moment, for sure. Especially with his octopus. Oh, my God. Poor Tilda Swinton octopus. What? Rest in peace, Tilda Swinton's octopus. (laughs) And, yeah, that's another thing to applaud Chance Crawford's um, performance on. is basically that he was just yapping. He was just talking to nobody. Like, he wasn't talking to Tilda Swinton there. Tilda Swinton was probably just like talking in a um, in a booth while um, Chance Crawford had to act basically against nothing. And that was really interesting. And I think it really made his entire... Um, it really showed the Deep's true persona and how he's truly evolved in the fight scene versus Starlight and um, Butcher, which in Butcher... And that star, uh, what, what am I saying? I don't know. I'm kind of fucking, you know, kind of frazzled right now. But yeah, that scene, that fight scene was actually really well done. And, you know, the boys, for the most part, it isn't the best made fight scenes out there, you know? And it's very far and few between, but it's, they're still, um, they still know how to get the job done, which in this case, they really, it's a really well done fight scene. And it really has something. That's truly paid off with um, A Train, which A Train actually redeems himself. Well, I mean, he's been on his Dem Shark the entire season, 
So for him to finally out himself as the guy um, who's the leak, then yeah, it was um, it's very interesting. I really liked to see A Train move. You know, it was really good, and it was interesting to see him in a fight versus um, the Deep, where the Deep actually held his own for the most part. Like he isn't the dude is pretty powerful, but he's also doofus. So I mean, you can't take it too seriously. Also, Black Noir is really powerful for some reason. Like. Like, I think he's more powerful than um, the OG Black Noir. I think Black the OG Black Noir had a lot more skill, but there's a lot more power with with this new Black Noir where his, um, <laughs> sadly, his weakness is narcolepsy. But it is what it is, poor guy. Well, he also, like, he can also fly, so that's also very fun. I do think that this, um, that this episode really relied on the fact that they really need to ramp things up for the next episode, which I feel like they really did that a lot for Huey. Like Huey has had a has had a rough season. Like the dude's been taking hits here and there, man. This poor guy can't catch a break. And like a couple episodes ago, his dad passed away. Now he's fucking um spoiler alert, he was fucking like Starlight's doppelganger. It's not even yeah, no, <laughs> he was fucking Starless doppelganger. You know, that shit's not going to work out well. No. It's going to be very interesting how they handle that in um, the final episode of this season. And I feel like that um, that chameleon character might have a lot more to do in the next in the next episode. Or not in the next episode. Probably in the next episode, for sure, but the next season. I feel like that's a very interesting take and a really um, cool way that they explored how they can do um, shooters like, and assassins. Obviously, assassins probably also have to shapeshift, and that's really fun. That's really fun to watch. It's also really gross, I won't lie. It was kind of like, I think it goes with the vibe of the season where it's been really over the top with the violence. Like, the violence in the show has been always over the top, but I feel like this season, it just feels like it's been pushing it. It's been really pushing the violence, which rip the ripping off of the skin is just so gross to watch sometimes. Like, oh my gosh, I'm not rewatching that scene. Ugh. No way. And, you know, I feel like the same thing happened with Homelander when he w confronted Web Weaver. What? I can't, I can't say it. When Same thing happened with Web Weaver, you know, because when Homelander confronted Web Weaver, the dude was just like spurned out. He was basically like, he couldn't help, help himself. Bro. And kind of like, yeah, it, it was just so disturbing to see Homelander actually. We never seen Homelander like commit like. That kind of level of violence and against a soup like that, you know, it's always either off screen or just like a punch in the gut from Noir, you know. So it's just interesting to see that for the most part, Homelander's like true violence and just absolute power is mostly cut off screen. So it was really cool to see his powers sheen. Like it's really cool to see his power in um in like real screen, you know. What what am I saying? I don't know. But yeah, Homelander is always great. I don't know. I, he's my favorite villain of all time. I'm not very good. I'm always going to say that. But I feel like Homeland is actually very happy because his son really turned on him. Ryan really turned on him, which Ryan is also very interesting. He's the wild card of the show, right? He really dictates what happens and where the power levels lie is with Ryan because Ryan is essentially a natural born superhero, which is a very interesting thing they have to call. They have to tackle and they have to really see where that goes you know and i think ryan has been really good this season like i feel like people have been always um they're not the biggest fans of ryan in the past few seasons but i feel like here he's really held his own i really like that you know and i'm really excited to see what happens to him in the finale and the final season of the show which i feel like butcher butcher's definitely gonna get He's definitely going to die, but I feel like his death might be the final few. It will be definitely the final few episodes of next season. I don't think he'll die. He'll probably, he'll definitely die in, the, in season five. I just don't know if he'll die probably at the season finale or, or whenever, honestly. The dude, he just feels like he needs, he just needs to rest at that point, you know, he on this revenge tour for so long that he never truly felt rest and that's the same thing for mother's milk i love mother's milk marvin we love marvin here man 
I just feel like this poor guy doesn't really catch a break, and he just needs to go live his life and go live it well. And I just feel bad for this guy because he has so much burden. You feel, you can feel that stress, and it's just wow, truly really sad. And I really like how they address like the weight loss of the actor and how that um, portrays like how um, stressed and how much of the toll of this job has taken on Mother's Milk. Which in real life, I believe that. Um, Laz Alonso, the actor for Mother's Milk, he he had a weight loss because he needed to change his diet diet up, which great for him. I mean, we love um, what's it called? It's really good to be um, very stingy with the diet. Yeah, yeah, what? It's really good to be um, very um, intentional with your diet, you know. And I'm glad the guy's taking steps for that. And in this case, you're using the the weight loss as a way of um, showing the stress and all of the impact of. Um, the job for Mother's Milk. And it's really interesting. I really hope he gets his rest with his um, daughter and his wife. The poor guy. Which I didn't realize his wife was the same lady from um, Fallout. From Amazon Prime's Fallout. She was the same lady who ordered the nuke. I know, spoiler alert for Fallout, actually. But yeah. And she's the same lady who ordered the nuke. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's crazy. I didn't know that it was the same girl. Anyways, I feel like, though, a couple of things that I wasn't the biggest fan of. Or probably Frenchie and Kamiko. There's, I feel like their storyline has came full circle. I think but I'm still like, sometimes I just feel very detached from the stories this season. You know, it feels like they're always adding something. They're always adding some level of trauma to them every single season. And it's kind of sad, but I'm also like, what more could you take? You know, and I mean, I understand there's so much that life gives you, but damn, it has a lot. And sometimes it just feels so disconnected that. Like, you kind of want them to brush that aside a bit because you want to focus on the main storyline, you know? It just feels like they just gave them that storyline for them to do, especially Frenchie, where at this point, like, Colin is just basically nothing burger of a character. He's just there, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah, the guy is in there, hasn't came back since episode four, so I don't really care. No, but it is what it is, you know? The, the entire season is in a very... I think it's still very good, but I don't think it's um what it could have been. We'll see how the finale lands. If the finale like truly lands, then it'll definitely do wonders for how I see this season. But for the most part, the season's been um solid, and I think it's it's definitely lower than season three so far for me. But it's still one of the better seasons, and for the, overall this episode, this episode is great. It really makes me excited for the finale and i really hope that finale is a game changer so yeah season four episode five f5 ugh. season four episode seven of the boys the insider gets a nine out of ten out of me thank you for listening and hope to see y'all next week for the finale of the boys season four